I want to talk about uh, scapegoating. There's been fantastic uh, research done on scapegoating. Interestingly enough, it's not just in psychology. It's in uh, neurology and looking at the play of the brain and what happens in groups versus one-on-one. Um, so that has been fascinating. Also, interestingly enough, it's come from anthropologists. It was a hot issue years ago, scapegoating and how that plays within tribes that are very isolated, tribes that are on an island or in a remote area of uh, limited resource, so several different tribes fighting each other. Um, that isolation that creates scapegoating has had quite a bit of researching going back um, to the 50s, but more recently um, has been jumped on an even more fascinating, thank God, um, because scapegoating is just so... Um, it's done without realizing, and it does so much damage. Um, here is one of the things that's really interesting that they have uh, discovered over and over again in modern society as they're studying the online scapegoating. I think that's why it's become such a hot topic, topic is because of the online um, what, what's going on. What they've learned is those people that are picked for scapegoating, guess what? They often have some of the very highest IQs, many of your geniuses. It was a huge percentage, over 90 something percent. Um, it, it, our, our genius geniuses are scapegoated during their life. It's often people who rate very high on the um, emotional intelligence also. And that's very unusual because a lot of your um, high scoring intellectual geniuses have very low scores on emotional intelligence. And we're realizing with the envant of AI and computers, emotional intelligence is what's going to be sought and needed because um, the intelligence that we have counted on, our computers will be handling. Um, and what's fascinating is you have both those components. Your, your genius is often scapegoated and your opposite, your emotionally intelligent uh, individuals very often used to scapegoat. Um, the, and of course, the cliche of anyone who has a uh, physical or learning disability. But what was surprising is the uh, personality that came out so clearly on top of those people who are very empathetic to other human beings um, and animals and life, those who have high emotional intelligence because of that, um, are often picked to scapegoat because that very emotional intelligence threatens people and makes it, because they're sensitive to others' feelings, makes it very easy to uh, have them be scapegoats. And they're still studying the reasons more, so it's not real clear yet, but uh, that's one of the uh, hypotheses that they've come up with. The other is that um, they tend to be individuals who will speak up and stand out against the group if someone else is being teased or scapegoated. And so they immediately have that turned on to them. And that that emotional intelligence that has them speaking up uh, is also why they so often end up being scapegoated. They also, many people who have been scapegoated throughout their lives, be, probably because of their intellectual or emotional intelligence, often end up being uh, quite successful in life in, in their various fields. So um, that to me is fascinating. I've watched people be scapegoated, including myself at so many different times. Um, 
And I, I've experienced it personally, and I've watched it happen to loved ones and, and the damage that it does. Um, so uh, let's make sure that when we're talking about problems, we don't ever talk behind people's back um, and that we address it as a group and we focus on solving the problem. When a person's name is involved, which often will happen, if you do it in a group so that there is loving and support and there's no such thing as being bad or good, it is just learning, um, then it's transformational. Then you prevent politics and back talk, et cetera, from happening. I much prefer things be done in a group, but lovingly uh, or focused on the problem. Now, this is said to you from a hypocrite. I am the worst hypocrite in everything I'm saying because when I get exhausted, I get triggered and I feel beaten up. I feel used. Um, and that's not fair to anyone else. That has to do with me and my psychological problem. Um, because I haven't learned to say no, even at this age, I, I try, but that street kid in me is triggered whenever I have to, Im, Im, I don't have to, see how I word that? I try to make myself a victim, which is bull. Um, when That's passive aggressive, isn't it? When I uh, choose to help this or that child when it's being reached out to me, I'm doing that on top of everything else that I'm doing, but I have a hard time saying no because I was hungry and I was in that situation and it just triggers me at that place. So what happens is I go to people where I'm dealing with non-emergency issues and I lose it. I mean, I lose it, um, especially if I am haven't had the time or I didn't prioritize my time correctly and uh, a community or child paid the price of that. I want to blame someone else when, of course, I can't. It's, it's my doing. I made my choices and it's my doing. But it comes out in a very angry, angry way of, I can't keep repeating things to you. I can't keep spending this much time on you, blah, blah, blah. Instead of a far more mature, calm, uh, here are my boundaries. This is the last podcast I'll be making on this team. So please write your instructions from it and uh, train the people on your team to train people because if you say you're too busy to train people and you've not trained anyone to train you, um, I will not consider that a valid excuse. And, and to calmly express how thankful and grateful I am instead of, I can't take this anymore. How many months have I repeated and repeated this? Um, like, like a young child. Uh, and, um, and that, when it's attached to names, which I do believe in. I've seen the effectiveness of that over the years when it's done correctly. But when it's done incorrectly and immaturely, uh, like a, with by a hypocrite like myself, um, it's it's devastating and it's wrong. And I've learned today of um, how wrong in a way that is shameful. Not shameful as in oh, I did so wrong, I'm so bad, so everyone has to say, no, no, it's okay, uh-uh, no, not that game, as in, factually, it was hurtful, and it was wrong, um, and, and that's a big lesson that I've had to relearn too often, I who say to you folks, I'm, I'm sick of having to repeat the same things, this hypocrite has, um, had to learn that lesson again. Scapegoating is a cancer. I, um, in SunPower, excuse me, um, Microsoft, that used to be, uh, I think it's SunPower, if I remember, uh, we had my home interns when it was first opening um, in, um, 
the 70s and early 80s in uh, Bellevue, Washington um, and Redmond. Uh, they first started in, in Bellevue near um, the uh, university where my stepdad was uh, president for a while and, and mom dean of students for a while in that college uh, called Bellevue College. Uh, they had their first office building and we had interns and it was magical because uh, Microsoft wasn't so huge yet and it was just kind of going from Mercer Island where I grew up and a garage into kind of their big office building in Bellevue um, and their environment was very much doing things even by name problem solving, this is the person that's doing that, how can we solve it so that this person, it's easier for them, and how do we do blah, blah, blah. It was amazing for um, the home applicants uh, in Washington State, the um, home students, um, just fantastic environment. And then I saw, and people stopped wanting to intern with them, I saw when they became bigger and bigger and lost that, which of course is so hard to maintain as you become big, that's not their fault. But I saw the difference it made. And that's that many years ago. So you would think that I would have learned by now. Um, and they really discouraged scapegoating by discussing everything as a group in your group and never talking you know behind the backs if i'm talking about someone and something i'm discouraged with if i'm following their model i would make sure that that person knows and and hears i even forward to the person which is probably what's been so hurtful forward to the person um how i feel and forward to the others help this person with this that model worked fantastic to reduce any scapegoating. When it doesn't work is if you have someone acting immature, like myself, um, and um, losing it, triggered, and saying, I'm so sick of asking you over and over and over again. I can't keep doing the same instructions and blah, 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 blah. Um, then it, it, it destroys, it hurts very deeply. Scapegoating, watch out for it, please. Let's make, in spite of your CEO, in spite of your CEO, let's make IHF a place that is completely scapegoating free, which has been my fault, scapegoating free so that um, we have that wonderful environment and we start noticing people being scapegoated online or in uh, any organization and in our own families. Um, that I've always watched for within my family and relatives and uh, centers where I live, but I'm seeing them up close. So it's easy for me to notice and try to immediately rectify. Online is more difficult, especially with a CEO like me. So help me, please. Um, if we don't each feel love and treasured, um, we lose the very energy that is our life. Um, and that goes for children, elderly, and everyone in between. We each need that so much. And I am ashamed of my um, frustration getting triggered and anger. Um, I really hope that people, in spite of your CEO, make IHF a really special place where no one, and I mean no one, is scapegoated. But if there are issues, we work those out and we keep clear boundaries. And remember, the types of people who are scapegoated are often, statistically, factually, our most brilliant, our most empathetic, uh, compassionate, emotionally intelligent, um, and, and that's fascinating. All right, thank you so, so much.